So they are trying to keep their business model in place. So at every single turn, they're trying to avoid regulation. And obviously that always goes back to, um, it always goes back to profit, but it's, but it's a, a bit trickier because what they're trying to do here is keep this business model that allows them to have a, a set of immunity that no other companies have. So tech platforms have immunity under something called Section 230 of the Communication Decency Act, meaning that which was a bill that was written before these platforms were even the size that they are now. And what it allows these platforms to do is to have all this harm that happens on their platform, right? Running ads that can discriminate pe from people, keeping people out of uh, job opportunities or housing opportunities. And then they can go in the courts and say that they are immune to civil rights law. And they are trying to keep that immunity in place while there is a deep movement to actually remove certain aspects of that immunity. Immunity, whereas if, you're, if a Facebook recommends that you follow certain people or recommends that you join certain groups, they shouldn't be immune to that because that's part of their product design, not part of free speech. They shouldn't be immune for paid advertisement that happens on their platform because that's about their business model. And so they are trying to avoid regulation. And as a result of trying to avoid regulation, they're willing to lie at every turn. And so Joel Kaplan, who is the director of policy and Brett Kavanaugh's best friend, did a lot of the quarterbacking for Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh's confirmation and was one of the guys in the suits during the Bush Gore recount that was banging on the doors trying to prevent all of our votes from actually being counted, is now the policy director. Him and Sheryl Sandberg went to college together and I guess famously used to date. So Sheryl multiple times has told me that Brett Kavanaugh, I mean, that, that uh, Joe Kaplan's not a racist and Joe Kaplan doesn't have a race problem, even though story after story shows that when issues come down the pike about actually addressing racial justice issues, Joe Kaplan stands in the way. But at the end of the day, all of this goes back to Mark Zuckerberg. He has 60% of the shares. He is chairperson and CEO. Back in the summer of 2020, I was on a Zoom call with uh, Vanita Gupta, who was then at the Leadership Conference on Civil Rights, and Sherilyn Eiffel from the um, NAACP Legal Defense Fund. And I challenged Mark directly about Joe Kaplan. And Mark actually shot back and said that he makes the decisions, and he's the one that keeps Joe Kaplan in this place. And so for all of us, we have to recognize that until Congress steps in and removes immunity for these types of actions and actually changes the business model so that this company can no longer harm us, it's going to continue to do it. And I think the big thing, Roland, that we all have to remember is this country has done this before with big companies. The reason why our seatbelts work in our cars is not because the auto industry is benevolent. It's because there's accountability, there's regulation, there's infrastructure that oversees it. The reason why we can go into a supermarket and pick out meat and that for the most part it's safe is because there's infrastructure there and accountability and consequences when it's not. The tech companies should not have this type of immunity. Only folks that have the type of immunity that um, tech companies get right now are police um, police officers, and we know how that works for black folks. All right, folks, back to that whole Mark Antoine video in just one moment. Alexa, play our favorite song again. Okay. I only Black Star Network is here. Hold no punches. I'm real uh, revolutionary right now. Like, Support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. Uh, thank you for being the voice of Black America, Roland. Hey, Black, I love y'all. All momentum we have now, we have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig?